Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Listen, grab you a cup of coffee, get your Bible out, and let's take just a few moments and really build our faith. You know, there's a lot of stuff going on in the world today, a lot of attacks. And, you know, unfortunately, a lot of times, if we come to the Lord and we give our hearts to Christ and we give Jesus lordship over our life, we think that everything's going to be smooth. In fact, I was told a lot of times, come and get saved and everything will be great. Well, I got saved and everything was great as far as going to heaven, but it was still really rough in my life. You know, things were tough. I mean, I still had to deal with stuff. I still had to deal with frustrations, problems, uh, you know, temptations, tests, trials, and everything else. And so you see, when we get saved, let's don't come into the kingdom of God with a false idea of, of, of thinking, well, everything's just going to be smooth and easy from now on. It's not. Jesus said in John 16, he said, in this world, you're going to have tests, trials, troubles, tribulations. But he goes on and says, but be of good cheer for I've overcome this world. In other words, the Lord says, you got some tests and trials, but if you learn how to walk with me, you can overcome those tests. I don't know what you're going through today, but you really need to hear these next couple of verses that we're going to touch on because we're touching on the fight of faith. Fighting a good fight of faith. You know what a good fight of faith is? It's a fight that you win. I've never been in a good fight that I lost, okay? A good fight is whenever I come out on top. And here he says, fight in 1 Timothy 6, 12, fight the good fight of faith. That means use your faith to fight to get what God says and, and use the, you know, fight a good fight with it. Fight to win. Get some, some toughness in your walk with God. And he says this, lay hold on eternal life or the, the life of God. See, a lot of times we say eternal life, we think about going to heaven, but he's not talking about heaven. The word life here is zoe. In the Greek, it means the God kind of life. Lay hold of this new life that you have in Christ Jesus. Don't let the, the devil or problems or people or anything steal it away from you. Then he goes on, he says this. He says, to which you are also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. In other words, he says, don't be a secret agent Christian, okay? Let your light shine. Walk in faith with God all the time in front of people that believe and people that don't believe. But you have to learn how to walk in faith and you're going to have to learn how to fight the good fight of faith. Well, somebody about this time says, well, brother, you know, the thing is this, that do I fight God? Who am I fighting? Fighting people? Fighting the church? No. A lot of Christians just fight anything and everything except the right thing. The thing we need to understand is this. We have an adversary in this life, and his name is the devil. And in and, and John 10.10, 10, Jesus said he's a thief, and he comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. And we need to understand that our fight of faith is, is against the enemy, is against the devil and his traps. Look, look in fact, in 1 Thessalonians over here, we drop down to chapter 2 and verse 18. The Apostle Paul, actually I'm going to read verse 17 and 18 to you because he blends it together. It says this, But we, brethren, having been taken away from you for a short time in presence, not in heart, endeavored more eagerly to see your face with great desire. Paul says, you know, we, we got separated and, and we were separated physically, but not emotionally, not, not spiritually. Our hearts are with you. We love you. We want to come back and be a part of you. We want to get back there so we can do what God's called us to do. But listen to this next verse. Therefore, we, we wanted to come to you. The desire to do the right thing was there. He says, I even Paul time it again, but Satan hindered us. Notice the devil didn't stop him, but he did hinder him. And he delayed Paul getting back to the Thessalonians and, and teaching them the word of God. And so what we've got to understand is this. There is a devil out there that's trying to destroy you. And, 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 and he's going to come after you. And your fight is not against God. God is for you. It's the devil that's against you. It wasn't God that hindered Paul from going back there and ministering the word. It was Satan and his demon forces of hell. And so he says here, you've got to learn how to use your faith that when the enemy's trying to hinder you from having what God said you can have, you know how to fight with that faith and get that which God says is yours. Well, you say, Brother Huffman, how am I going to use my faith to fight? Well, I like what, what the Apostle John records the Lord over here in Revelation chapter 12 and verses 10 and 11. He says this, 
He says, Then I heard a voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of His Christ have come. For the accuser of the brethren who accused them before God day and night has been cast out. Satan's the accuser of the brethren. He's your attacker. He's the one who's trying to bring all these thoughts of defeat and, and fall away from God into your mind. But look what God says. And whenever he, this, uh, this accuser attacks, he says, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony. You know what they did? They used their faith. Listen, quit giving up. Don't quit. Don't be discouraged. Don't let the enemy defeat you. Don't let him get you out of church. Don't let him get you out of fellowship with God. Don't let him get you out of the Bible. Don't let him get you back into the life that Christ redeemed you out of. Grab a hold of this new life in Christ Jesus and fight with everything in you to walk in it and lay hold of it and make it yours. Amen? Because your faith will move the mountains that the enemy is trying to put in your way. You have faith. We've already established that. Now what you need to do is begin to use your faith, speak your faith, stand in faith, and trust God to get you to the other side. Amen? Today, I believe that your faith is going to put you over, and God is going to respond to your faith and bring you the victory right in the midst of the enemy's attacks. Amen? So right now, just stand up and say, Lord, I just claim by faith my victory. I refuse to quit. I will not give up. I will not turn back. I'm laying a hold of that which you have for me. And in Jesus' name, I have it now. Amen? That's faith talking. And that's what he said. You overcome by the words of your mouth. Not what everybody else is saying, but what you're saying. And I set myself in agreement with you. And until next time, I'm praying for you that God's very best will be yours.